The Network by user Rithri No one knows how they did it. The entire human sector was spanned by the most complex engineering feat achieved in the known galaxy. This network was unfathomably intricate and is the key reason to humanity's rise. Humanity is a new race. They originated on a bio-world, rich in both resources and threats. While sentient spacefaring life was uncommon in those environments simply due to the danger, it was not unheard of. Their build was unique, but so was everyone else's. Endurance predators by origin, they would outlast most species in an outright run. But in terms of flexibility, strength, or toughness, they were just around middle of the pack for a bio-world species. A valuable addition to the galaxy, but not anything special. Now, technology and engineering. This is where the story lies. Nearly all races were exact in their communication requirements. Point A needed to talk to point B. A connection was made. A military ship was connected to the headquarters. One embassy may be connected to another. It made sense and wasted no resources. Communication was extremely resource-intensive, especially over the vastness of space. One connected what needed to be connected, and that was that. Humanity liked to disagree. They connected nearly everything into a network. A ship wasn't connected to just the appropriate home port like needed. Instead, it was part of a stellar mesh that allowed it to contact practically everything in human control. When this fact was discovered, everyone was baffled. Why would a military ship need a connection to the stock exchange of a planet it would never go to? But the humans insisted on their method. The cost to build the infrastructure was ridiculous. Just to fully connect a major planet-side metropolis within itself, where one could lower costs using physical optical networks, would be trillions of credits. The humans not only did that, but connected all other metropolises on a planet, built floating relays to maintain the mesh over space, and connected entire planets to the network. The cost would bring the largest economies to their knees. It wasn't like this was a restricted network, with limited bandwidth for only the most important messages. This was apparently a universal right for them. Everyone and anyone, from the young of their species to the old, had free access. They spent trillions upon trillions to give a random human on planet A the ability to talk to a random human on planet B about the most mundane of topics. Not only that, but literally everything was connected. Not just communications equipment. Vehicles downloaded mapping data and drove themselves. Their clothes acquired weather forecasts and changed their internal temperature control mechanisms to match. Their chairs were even designed to download user preference data and adjust its firmness and height. Now, if this was just an interesting and yet monumental waste of engineering and credits, it would be but a footnote in humanity's entry into the encyclopedia. But the humans took the greatest advantage of this network and started outpacing nearly everyone in the galaxy. Their scientific progress was somewhat quirky. A generally violent past caused rapid expansion in the past few centuries, making humanity one of the faster-growing races. Naturally, after first contact, there was a scientific golden period prevalent in most contacts. Overall, though, their goals were short-sighted, and they did not have the focus or tradition of many societies. No one really expected the humans to be pioneers in scientific research. The network changed that. They were able to bring everyone into the scientific fold. The standard first contact information grant was disseminated through human society at a blazing pace. A farmer from a far-off outworld planet can discover new fauna, and within hours the leading genetic researcher in a core world would be reconstructing its genetic code, while a medical team aboard a floating space station was analyzing its toxins for medical use. Through this impeccable communication and collaborative style, the humans catapulted to the front of the race in nearly all fields. Even militarily, they gained enormous advantages. As the Mu'alum pirates discovered, the humans did not take valuable time to call in an airstrike. Their armor was always connected to everyone else. Everything was monitored. Reinforcements would be deployed exactly where they were needed. 
lines would be reinforced before a crack ever developed. A commander sitting back home would have direct information from the front lines, as well as civilians in the sector. Its coordination was such that the Mu'alam first assumed humanity was a hive mind species, which, in a way, they had become. While maintaining the same ingenuity and advantages of a self processing species, their unique network allowed collaboration and collective thought as though they were a single entity. They managed to be at once both independent and dependent, both chaos and order. Let us hope they choose to build and not destroy. Neat, concise. I like it. Not a bad one at all. Um, if you guys uh, feel like it, um, comment down below on uh, your favorite um, scientific fact about uh, marine life. For me, it is that the man o' war jellyfish is a crazy, crazy thing. Or sorry, the man o' war is related to jellyfish, but it is a colony species that's toxin is so potent that it can lay out an adult human male uh, and can even cause death. It is not good. Stay away from man war They are terrifying. So yeah, that's my fact. Um, <laughs> whatever you guys have about marine life, let me know. Um, oh, also the, the, uh, the gold ring, blue ringed octopus. That's one from uh, Australia. That one's bad too. Um, but anyway, guys, like, comment, subscribe. I will talk to you later. I love you. Bye, y'all. I'll be thinking about you in my sleep, oh yes.